Good morning, good morning. Dreams Relationship Academy. Quentin, welcome. Good morning, good morning. <laughs> Come on, everybody. Come on, everyone. The time to love is here. Let these troubled days be done, I tell you. Come on, everybody. Come on, everyone. The time to love is here. Let these troubled days. Well, good morning, good morning, Shade. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hey, folks, this is a special, fantastic Friday. <laughs> and the reason is because I'm here in Wilmington, North Carolina, and we're waiting for a hurricane. Now, that's kind of interesting, isn't it? Waiting for a hurricane. And all that really means is that it's on the way and we're just trying to hunker down so that we'll be in a better position to deal with it. As I thought about this, I've been watching the news and whatnot. And yesterday, I was sort of off the grid because one of the things we know about hurricanes, I grew up in North Carolina. I survived some of the worst hurricanes we've ever had. The last hurricane, uh, Florence, back in 2018, between our homes did over $100,000 in damage, and we're still recovering, you know. And the thing about a hurricane is that you must be prepared. And there are some great things we can learn about life when we look at how you prepare for a hurricane. Because what about, you know, I guess the difference between life and a hurricane is many times things happen in life that are totally unexpected. At least with a hurricane in today's world, in today's you know modern technology, if you think about it, in the old days, before there was radar, before there were cell phones, before there were communications devices, when people were on the sea and a hurricane came, <laughs> it was like, you just got whatever happened to you uh, was in the hands of the, of the, of the elements. And so off the coast of North Carolina, there are hundreds of ships that sank during hurricanes. So let's look at the hurricane. And now some of this is based on our book, really, in the, the 12 Universal Laws of Success. And if, if I ask, if someone asks, well, what chapters? The law of vision, the law of change, the law of thought. And the reason I like to focus on those three laws is because the idea of being prepared for a hurricane means that you must have a mindset that's based on experience. Now, let me tell you a little story about experience. A very, 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 very wealthy person encountered a young person who wanted to know the secret of wealth. How do you accumulate wealth? How do you get rich? And when they asked that question, the young person was uh, sort of impetuous, you know, how people can be, you know, I don't want to hear a long story, sir. If you could just break it down. What's the secret of success, the secret of wealth? And the person said, right decisions. Oh, that's it. Yep. So uh, how do you learn to make right decisions? The person said, experience. Wow. Well, how do you get experience? Wrong decisions. And I say that because so many times people have situations in life where they may not have the experience themselves necessary to make better decisions. But guess what? You don't have to. Experience, if you have the experience, hallelujah. But one of the lessons in life is to listen to other people who've been there. You know, when I was a kid, Topsail Island was a, a place where many of us had, our families had homes. And when the hurricane came through there, it literally destroyed everything. And so one of the lessons we learned was, number one, don't build so close to the ocean. Okay. Number two, to really think about whether you wanted to live right by the ocean anyway, was the view <laughs> worth the, the, the risk? And some of us made the decision it wasn't, some made the decision that it was. 
But one of the things that I know at that time, they told us evacuate the beach, evacuate the beach. And uh, <laughs> my dad um, was kind of one of those people that uh, decided against it. And in this particular situation, they were saying that the sound in the ocean, you know, the, the properties are along the waterfront. The sound is on one side, the ocean is on the other. Well, when the hurricane came, the sound in the ocean met. And my dad said the reason was that because the house was built on these nine feet poles, that everything was okay, like telegram poles. Well, when the ocean and the sound met, literally there's water under you everywhere. And he said that he literally got seasick because the house is standing still, the ocean is moving. The mind translated that into the house was moving. And what he learned from that was don't mess with mother nature. <laughs> that, there, that there are times when people tell you to do stuff, you should do it, okay? And so he learned his lesson about, as they say, riding out the storm. So now, how does that apply to life? When people tell you evacuate, you know, a lot of times they say, well, can't be that bad. I'm just going to ride it out. Their, this, their direction to you is based on previous experience and what they've seen before. And so in life, if you don't have the experience personally to dealing with a particular situation, then ask somebody who's been there. You don't have to fall in every hole in the road when there's somebody who's already been down that road. And this is critical, folks, because sometimes our ego will tell us, well, I just want to see how it goes. If, if the interesting thing about life is this, life leaves clues. And clues are lessons available to those who pay attention. Life always leaves clues, but many times people don't pay attention. So when you start preparing for the hurricane, I talked to my friends yesterday and I would say, hey, I'm gonna be in a hurricane format. What, that, what does that mean? Well, that means number one, gas up all the cars. Because when the hurricane comes, the power goes out. Okay? Number two, it means get cash. When the power goes out, the cash machines don't work. You can't get gasoline. And you never know how long the power is going to be out. You think about Puerto Rico, they're talking about the power being out for months. Now, that's kind of extreme, but that's a reality for people there. So you get your, you, you get your cash, you get your gasoline. Number three, tie down the hatches. Look around your house. We have a nice yard. We have lots of stuff in the yard, lawn chairs and all that stuff. Well, let me tell you something, folks. Based on experience, when a hurricane comes through, you may not find any of that stuff. When a 100 mile an hour wind comes through your yard, you, your lawn chair, your, it, it could be down the street, up the block. As a matter of fact, in one of the hurricanes, I remember this lady, I think, made quilts or something. And they found quilts 10 miles away from where the house was as a result of a hurricane. So you batten down the hatches, you put everything aside. You charge up all your cell phones. And that's when you have your backup charges. You know, thank God, you know, the, our daughter gives us those little machines, you know, being a, I don't know what I would call myself, a senior techie. Uh, uh, but those things that, you know, you charge them up and then when your power's off, they can charge your cell phones up. So you get those things together, that, that get everything all charged up. Go to the grocery store, get enough water. You know, I went out, I got three cases of water on top of a couple we had. Because what we've seen is when a couple of hurricanes hit, the grocery stores didn't open for a week. Get canned goods, pork and beans, okay? For, the, for us vegetarians, just get beans, <laughs> okay? But the whole idea is to have enough food, enough of your staples available to ride out the storm. So now, if a person, I've been through it, and so I've seen how it goes. A friend of mine <laughs> was visiting one time during a hurricane. I think it was Fran, and Fran was a toughie. We had 
two of our family friends were killed because they did not listen. You know, they tell you don't drive down the highway because of the water. You know, 12 inches of water can float a car, especially a small one. And uh, one of our friends, uh, the, the husband and uh, his brother decided that they didn't heed the hurricane warning and they went driving down the road and just a foot of water, the car turned over, they were killed. Now, that's extreme. And I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that pay attention. Pay attention to all the signs. So the point is that I've been through the hurricane. I grew up in, with hurricanes. And so when a person asks me about what to do and I tell them, I'm telling them from experience. So in life, when you're confronted with unfamiliar situations, and if you don't have experience in dealing with any particular situation, for example, dealing with failure, if you've never failed before, chances are you haven't really ever tried to do anything significant. But if you have failed before, then you say, you know what? Failure ain't permanent. It's not fatal. <laughs> okay. So let me just straighten up and try this thing again. If you don't have the experience yourself, your personal experience to rely on, then get help. That's the point. In everything you do. If you don't have the experience to rely on, many of you are entrepreneurs. You start out in a business. We were doing an interview last night and uh, one of the, the person I was interviewing was sharing that she started a new business and she said that the most disappointing thing was that her friends and family, the people she thought were going to be her customers, her first customers, didn't buy in. They did not contract with her to provide, to use her services. And she was disappointed. She said, they know me. I've known them for years. So that was a big disappointment. But she said the person who had helped her start the business told her, expect that. Okay. Sometimes, you know, things happen. There are times about that, it, that, that things can change. When I look at my network marketing organization, and I'm talking to some of the networkers, and, and I'm sure Quentin, who markets insurance, probably shared the, whole, the, the same thought. The minute the, the people who I thought would do my business, my close friends, people I'd known for years, that now 13 years down the line, I look back and now the single one of the people that I knew, who knew me, who I introduced to my business, ever did anything substantial. A couple of them came in, but none of them took it seriously. So that's a lesson, you know, now you don't have to go through it, but if I share that with you, then as a new entrepreneur, when that happens, you don't now judge your opportunity based on the fact that your friends and family and the people closest to you decided not to do it. And that's where it is in all phases of life. When you're facing any particular challenge, get advice from somebody who's been there. That being said, let's look at some, some points. Number one, you know, prepare your thoughts. And when I say prepare your thoughts, I mean prepare thoughts that always complement you as the winner, that always complement you as getting through it. So that whenever bad things happen, whenever disappointments occur, then you have the thought that this is good to help me grow and go where I need to go and grow. Ask yourself, what is the good experience? What is the good outcome that I can learn from this situation? So prepare your thoughts for all of the things that you may encounter in life. Prepare your emotions. Understand that emotions of anger can pull you off course. So prepare your emotions by having some blanket rules to live by. Someone said, it is a fool who will not be angry, but it is a wise man who will not be overcome by anger. And so pre prepare your emotions 
prepare yourself for the emotion of disappointment. You know, when things don't work out, when people disappoint you, you say, well, you know, this is preparing me for, for my higher good. When your friends turn their back on you, you say, this is a good thing. This is, this is clearing the deck so that new friends will appear. Many times, I, I call it the law of displacement, <laughs> okay? You have to get rid of the old thoughts so the new thoughts can come in. Think about this, there's that scripture that says, don't put new wine in the old wine skins. And I think that's the spiritual meaning of that. Don't try to put new ideas, new thoughts into an old frame of reference, an old mindset. So prepare your thoughts. Prepare your emotions so that you can handle anything that comes your way. So that you always have a way to say, hey, what's the good lesson that I should learn from this? Prepare your habits. Now, this preparation for the hurricane, I'm going to confess, I wasn't always so wise. <laughs> okay. I used to, as a young person, I used to think, well, man, this ain't nothing, you know. Half the time they tell you the hurricane is coming and it doesn't come. And let me tell you something. I remember being caught. I, I against my mother's wishes. Actually, I think I snuck out. Went to a, a movie, had a young girl I was dating. This is I was oh, I just got my license a year or so. And uh, we went to the movies. It was raining. We went to the movies when we came out. The rain was coming down so hard. You could barely see. Now, we didn't have cell phones and things like that in those days. And that girl said, I got to get home. And, I, you know, we didn't, you know, and, and the day when I was a child, you didn't bring a girl home. <laughs> you know, when you were 16 years old, you didn't bring a girl home talking about, can she spend the night here? That didn't happen. And her parents and, you know, people didn't have a communication. All she knew was she had to get home. Guess where she lived? on the sound. Now I got to drive her home on the sound by this time. And, and we didn't have all this communication stuff. So our mindset, we thought it was just a rainstorm. It was really a hurricane. When I drove her down to take her home, thank goodness I got her home. On the way back, I'm coming around the road and the whole highway is washed out for like a block and a half. Silly me figures I can drive through the water. I'm glad I survived. I didn't know that a foot of water would float the car. Well, I actually got through it. But as soon as I came out the water, not knowing what the deal was, what I should have done was let the car keep running and dry out. No, I gunned it. The car shut off, would not start. I ended up being out in the hurricane. Someone had to come and rescue me. And you know what my mother and father did. They gave me an opportunity to meet. The, <laughs> my mother called it the Board of Education. Okay. And so the point is, prepare yourself for the experiences in life. If there are ones that you're not familiar with, get help. So I was talking about being prepared in the habits. So after experiences like that, I understand now how to modify my habits. So I automatically go gas up, I automatically charge everything up. But yesterday, you know, I'm listening to the news, so we have a generator. But guess what? It's been sitting in a box for a year. All right. So I'm thinking, OK, this is time now to activate this generator, call some people that got it set up. So we now have a backup generator in case the power goes off. We can keep our food cold. We can keep our TV off. So the point is the habits that you have. Prepare yourself by creating new habits that are congruent with where you want to go. So create habits that are congruent with safety. Create habits that are congruent with success. And then find the relationships. Prepare yourself for relationships. Number one, have an idea of what you want in a relationship. Don't just get into a relationship with somebody because they show up. Because they like you. Man, you're so fine. Okay. I want to talk to you. I, what's that the young folks like? Let me holler at you. I always got this urge to go, oh, holler back at them. Okay. But in relationships, to have an idea of what you want. When, I, when the hurricane comes, I know how I want my life to be after this hurricane. 
some are prepared so it'll be that way. In relationships, have an idea of the type of relationship you want, the type of person you want to be in a relationship with, how you want them to treat you, how you want to treat them. Have a complete picture of what that relationship looks like in real life. If you don't have that picture, the nature abhors a vacuum. If you don't have a picture of the type of person you want to experience in your life and interact with, nature will bring you whatever's available. Good, bad, ugly, or indifferent. So prepare for relationships that complement where you want to go. Remember this, in preparing your, for your relationships, the law of displacement says this. If the people that you are surrounded by, I don't like to use the word dumb. Let's just say, if the people around you don't have as much knowledge as you, are not on the same or higher level than you, you may want to consider getting some new friends. Life works better when you surround yourself with people smarter than you, richer than you, more connected than you, because then you can learn from them. Number two, people identify who you are and judge who you are based on the people close to you. So if you're surrounded by people who are, let's just say, not exciting, then what does the word say? Birds of a feather flock together. So the very people that you want to meet will see this and guess what? They're going to run. Surround yourself with people who are going where you want to go. It's a whole lot easier to get on the train than the late track. you find just as we often talk with young people, and it's like you are hanging with the wrong crowd. And you, you talk to many people in prison, incarcerated persons, and they'll tell you, man, I was a young man. I was at the wrong group, in the wrong place, at the wrong time. I had no intention of doing these things, but I was with the bunch, and this, and I got convicted, and I'm here now for many, many years. So recognize that and say, this is. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. So this idea of programming the relationships is very critical because the people you commit to come into your life will influence how the world sees you, will influence the vibrations that you send out, which then determines what you attract into your life. So today, our watchword, our message is be prepared. Life leaves clues. Pay attention. Listen more. Talk less. Manage your ego. I used to say, some people say suppress your ego. Ego is a good thing because ego can drive you to excellence. Okay. But ego can also drive you to stupidity. Okay, so manage your ego because ego is a great sense of power. It's a great source of power, but you have to manage it. You have to handle it. You know, you look at Michael Jordan. He was talking about how many times he was saying like 29 times that the team entrusted him with the final shot and he missed and they lost. Okay, but his ego said, Michael, you're better than this. You have the ability to sing it, to, to pull it out. You hit every shot. This is what his ego is saying. That ego feeds his perfection, his nature of perfection. So what does that ego translate into? Not saying, we, I'm great, but it's saying, hey, be in the gym at 6 a.m. To shoot 300 free throws. To shoot that ball through every, through the basket from every position on the court. To figure out what your sweet spot is. So folks, today, be prepared. Pay attention get help, and most of all, have a blueprint for your life. Because all the things we talk about, the thoughts, the emotions, the habits, the relationships, are based on the blueprint, the vision you have for your life. Those of you who don't have the book, get the book. Chapter three is the law of vision. The Bible says where there's no vision, the people perish. Life says, where you have no vision, then whatever life wants for you is what you get.
It doesn't have to be that way because you have the power to change. Also, folks, I want to know about your stories. You know, we've been doing our interviews on obstacles and breakthroughs. I know many of you have had have tried to do incredible things in your lives. So be sure to go to our link tree, www.herbertharris.info and book a call because I'd like to talk to you personally. Book a call because I'd like to know a bit about your story, your challenges and how you overcame them and maybe set an interview and do something live online. Once again, when you manage your time, when you manage your thoughts, when you manage your emotions, when you manage your habits and your relationships, then you can truly be whatever you want to be. You can do whatever you want to do and you can have anything you desire. Black Man with Books, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Always knowing that the best is yet to come. Let's just take a deep breath, folks. Let's just soak it up for a moment. Take a deep breath. Let it out slowly. In this moment, make a decision to pay attention to life's clues so that you can learn from the experience of others, so that you can hear the inner voice that's guiding you, so that you can learn to fly on the wings and the winds of hope, of faith, and of love. And so it is. Love is here. Let these troubled days. All right, let's music it on out. Here we go. I often sit and wonder how things could be this way. I guess we'd better tell them this is a brand new day. Don't leave it up to the other man or to another day. Take your life into your hands. Make it work out your way. It's not the number of times you stumble down and fall upon the ground. It's the number of times you pick yourself up and keep on moving on to meet your goals. <laughs> All right, folks. This is Dr. Herbert Harris with another edition of Fantastic Friday. Always knowing that the best is yet to come. And so it is. 